guys, I'm your host, Ale Barab. We are live from Jerusalem at the official coverage of the R Crowd Global Investor Summit 2018. Even if you didn't make it to the Holy City for this amazing event, there's first Facebook Live, through which you get to interact with the creme de la creme of the global high-tech scene through your comments. So before I introduce you to my first guest, my question goes out to you. What do you think the next big thing in tech is? Be sure to let us know where you're watching from. China, Singapore, Australia, United States, Argentina. While you type, let me welcome, let's welcome my first guest from Finnegan, Gerson, Gershon Panich, a partner from Finnegan. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So tell us, you help startups to bring their patents to a next level, to the, to the uh, stronger level. Tell us about it. Well, there's a, there's a secret in, the, in our industry that very few people talk about, and that is that it's relatively easy to get a patent, but it's much more difficult to get a patent that's actually going to block competitors and increase the value of the company. So what's the difference between a weak pattern and a strong uh, patent? There's a, what I, I, I see a, a significant difference being that companies tend to focus on technical patents, right? Think about it. Inventions are technical. So the technical guy at the company, the engineer, the scientist, the CTO, talks to a technical patent attorney, and it's no doubt that a technical document comes out. And what happens is, competitors look at the technical document and they say, you know what, we like the underlying idea, but we can avoid that technical solution and do it a different way, avoid the patent. So the better way to, to develop patents is from a business perspective, a conceptual perspective, where you step away from the nitty gritty technical From details. the details. Okay. Yeah, and you get, you get into a high, sort of at a higher level. I just, uh, I was looking at a patent recently granted by, uh, to, a to Apple, right? You know, everything's hot now with face recognition, right? They yeah. unlocking the, uh, the iPhone 10 with face recognition. Well, Apple had the foresight just a few years ago to think, you know what, that's going to be our next generation of product. So they started, they, they filed for patent protection on it. And even though face recognition was available at the time, they found a clever conceptual way to patent it and now can block others from being able to offer face recognition to unlock a, a, a cell phone. So they're patented for, for face recognition completely, like no competitors can go in that? Well, what happened was they couldn't lock up face recognition because face recognition has it's, been around. Yeah. But what they recognized is that the phone has to be aware of the fact that you want to unlock it, right? If the phone is sitting on the table right in front of you, you okay. don't want the phone to just unlock. So what they did was they built into their patent protection the notion that when the phone is picked up, a sensor in the phone detects your detects that your, in, your intention to unlock, and then and only then does it turn on the camera to take a picture of your face. And everybody's going to need that feature. Okay. But they didn't limit it to a specific sensor or a specific algorithm, they kept it more broad. So essentially what you're saying is that you make startups be smarter with their patents. Yeah, you've got to bring the business people into the process. You can't make it a technical process. What we offer, and, and I do with, with I, we work with over 130 companies here in Israel, is we do strategic patent planning, where we bring the patent people together with the technical people, together with the business people, and we work together in a room to figure it all out. You know, I go into companies and I see amazing pitches, you know, and the pitch says, we're better than everybody else because we sure. do A, B, and C. But you look at their patents and the patents don't say A, B, and C. So we're trying to make the patent message align with the marketing message. So startups, go visit Finnegan <laughs> and, and let me fill you in to what's been going on here on the floor. Um, we've been looking at companies that are creating now future in so many industries like healthcare and mobility, energy, utilities. Honda is showcasing artificial intelligence startups, which I'll take you to visit later. And we'll also go to check if VocalZoom's car can crack the code of my vocals and recognize my voice. So, got your next big thing? You are ready? Let's see if you got it right. The time has come to stop limiting our thinking to tech sectors and begin to understand how tech trends are reaching across industries to reimagine the way we think about their impact on our lives. Here are five trends disrupting traditional industries this year. Construction goes digital. One of the biggest problems in construction is mistakes and errors. On the other hand, there is a trend of BIM, which is a building information management database, which can be used by constructions. Based on that, 
we can bring a lot of innovation to take the building all the way from planning phase to the maintenance phase. Innovations around BIM data and 3D models are making construction sites safer, more efficient and even more remotely accessible. A company to watch is SiteAware, transforming off-the-shelf consumer drones into powerful construction tools. The images are transformed into precise 2D, 3D and 4D models, allowing construction companies and real estate developers to see their sites as never before. Blockchain is here to stay. Less than a decade ago, blockchain and Bitcoin were terms that existed in the tech underworld. With cryptocurrency making the headlines daily, individuals and companies alike are mesmerized by the implications of blockchain technology. Citigroup and Nasdaq Inc. introduced blockchain to security sales. Visa partnered with blockchain platform BTL, and IBM took blockchain to the next level by combining the best of the tech and cloud software and releasing blockchain as a service. A company to watch is EquityX. The use of network effects and software in the VC platform creates a new paradigm in investments. Delivering wiser investment decisions in just two weeks. As an investor, I think that EquityX is creating a new token economy that will make a revolution a tremendous impact. Artificial intelligence is coming for our jobs. Robots and AI have come a long way since Roomba and Siri. Cars drive themselves. Robots deliver pizza. According to a 2013 University of Oxford study, half of American jobs could be automated within the next two decades. So many futurists and economists are considering the possibility of a jobless future. But some are looking at this a different way. Robots will not merely take jobs, they will also create them. Just like the mechanization of agriculture didn't destroy the economy, in fact robots are making farming easier and greener, robots in our near future will help create jobs. 3D printing speeds up. Additive manufacturing, as it is known in the industrial world, started with technical applications and ended up in homes and offices, similar to the trajectory of computers and laser printers. With the ability to replicate or create any object on demand, the 3D printer is Walmart in the palm of your hand. The company to watch in the next generation of 3D printing is Nexa 3D. Nexa introduced NXV, the first professional printer using LSPC technology, delivering quality engineering parts with precision at fast and uniform print speeds, regardless of geometry. In the future, we expect everything to be faster, even 3D printers. Smart mobility puts us back behind the wheel. Feels like autonomous driving has already taken over the roads as we start to see more autonomous features in today's cars. But it doesn't mean humans will be 100% demoted to the back seat. Phantom Auto addresses the limitations of autonomous vehicles by putting a human behind the wheel. Even as our world becomes more technologically advanced and automated, it is also clear that humans will never be obsolete. will never be obsolete, that's for sure. But we will share a lot of our home and work life with robots. Do you think a robot will be co-hosting with me next year? Maybe you guys will be having a virtual walk around the booths. This is so exciting. I guess it is the beauty of being human. We can get creative. There's no limit to our imagination. Joining me on set is Jason Murray from NAB Private Australia. Jason, welcome, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. So, um, if you're watching from that side of the world, let us know that you're here. And Jason, before we start, we jump into the questions. I want to make a little game with you, an association game. So, I'll give you a word and tell me the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Okay. Finance. Money. Technology. Computers. Future. Uh, deep learning. Investment. Humanity. Human. Send us your questions and we will pick one from the crowd to ask Jason and see. So tell us, what's the state of technology and funding in Australia? 
So uh, you mean in the startup space? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I thought it was pretty vibrant until I came to Israel. Ah. This is the first time I've ever been to Israel. Okay. And uh, obviously as a, as a taste of this conference is quite unbelievable. So technology is, um, is pretty advanced in Australia. There's uh, a lot of work hubs, hackathons, all that sort of thing. Um, funding is uh, okay, it's not as advanced as here, and we do suffer from a lot of Australian technology companies. As soon as they reach critical mass, they disappear off to the US. Um, but it is, I have to say, nothing like this country, and maybe that's born of the necessity of Israel with uh, surveillance and time in the military and the intellect and the research institutes and everything which I've learned yeah. about in the last Our solutions days. came from our needs. Correct, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how do you see the collaboration between corporates such as uh, NAB Private and startups to bring forward innovation globally? Yeah, so uh, NAB Private is the private bank operation of NAB, one of the largest banks in the country. And uh, like all banks globally, uh, we're going through significant disruption. And I think banks have realized that uh, some things they can do themselves, some things uh, there are other companies outside they need to bring in uh, to change the company. So uh, there's been a lot of um, startup activity in the financial sector. And I think uh, over the next decade, we'll see banks adopt some of that um, rather than invent it in-house. I understand that you've been um, collaborating with one Canadian startup. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, and uh, one that was actually introduced to us, funnily enough, through our crowd. Okay. Um, so we have a, uh, a VC division within NAB called NAB Ventures, uh, and they uh, made an investment into a Canadian accounting software company called Wave um, in the last year or so. Um, for us, it's all about the customer, and the objective of that investment was to make the experience for our customers uh, better um, in terms of them being able to um, combine accounting and banking. Okay, and share with us the value. You said that our crowd connected you to this company, to Wave, right? So what's the value of this collaboration between NAB Private and our crowd? Oh, look, it is, uh, it is enormous. Um, whether it is the education that it's giving our customers uh, into some of the specialist technology areas that Israel excels in, whether it be deep learning or med tech or agri tech or um, you know, many of the things that have uh, been pioneered in this country, um, uh, Australian high net worth individuals uh, in general are under diversified in their investments. They typically sit on Australian dollar cash, equities and property. So to enable our... As in almost everywhere else uh, around the world. Probably you're right. So to enable our uh, customers to uh, not only learn about technology but invest in exciting new startups in other countries with a global footprint uh, possibly eventually um, is really exciting and the Outcrowd team in Australia are fantastic um, a very strong part of the overall Outcrowd global platform um, Dan Bennett and the crew do a great job and we have a one last question coming from the crowd thank you for your great questions and and your interest in participating so we're taking the question what is the next big thing coming from Australia that's a good question I mean uh, Australia has been blessed uh, over time, as you know, with uh, resources, whether it be iron ore or oil or whatever. And um, coming to the end of the commodity boom, I think Australia is looking to reinvent itself. And I think uh, to be part of the information era, uh, as Israel has found itself in, is, is definitely something exciting. But I think Australia can learn a lot from countries like Israel uh, in terms of that, uh, that direction. This is why we have all this events, um, our Crowd Global Summit, to foster collaboration between great countries like Australia and Israel. So thank you, Jason, for joining us today. Nice and to we hope you. that you enjoy your first time in Israel. Keep enjoying Jerusalem. And our crowd is in a unique position to gain insights from the global investor ecosystem about the tech trends. So let's go to the plenary and get a sneak peek from the experts on the top tech, tech trends for 2018 and to guide us through a glimpse into the future, please welcome the Our Crowd partner at the Labs O2 Accelerator, Stav Erez, and the senior investment partner at Our Crowd, Eli Nier. Hi, everyone. It had become somewhat of a tradition that each year in the summit uh, we present to you what we think will be the hottest tech trends of the year. Our crowd is uniquely positioned to bring you the insights from the ecosystem. So we surveyed our partners, VCs, multinationals, 
um, CEOs, and their thoughts are all in the mix. Our first tech trend for 2018 is digi digital construction. Construction is one of the major sectors in world economy, but it is also one of the least efficient and least digitized. It is estimated that with the dig digitization of this sector, we can lower costs by a staggering 45% and help heal the long delays and project, bu budget and project budget overruns that are so common in the space. A very good example of a company o uh, operating in this field is a company called Cytoware. Cytoware is a young Israeli startup that combines augmented reality and drone technology to provide a digital replica of construction site, helping the site managers better understand the building process. Quantum computing. On February 2016, the NSA had issued a statement that it must act now against quantum computing threats. Why? A quantum computer can actually crack most types of encryption as we know it. Governments such as Russia, China, the United States are all developing quantum computers, but also companies such as Google, Microsoft, Alibaba, IBM. Just last November, IBM had announced on its, on its new 50 qubit quantum computer. 50 qubits is considered the number at which a quantum computer can make calculations that are considered almost impossible today. One of the companies that is taking advantage of this trend is QuantLR, an Israeli early stage company that is developing, using this technology to develop quantum key distribution that will protect other sensitive information. Our third tech trend for 2018 is smart mobility. It is estimated that by 2030, 15% of all cars will be autonomous, and another 60% will have high degree of driver assistance systems. Leading this revolution are many Israeli companies and startups. Companies such as Innovis and Arbor Robotics in the sensor level, companies such as ViaVision in the data fusion level, companies such as Halo in the artificial intelligence hardware level. A company not taking the beaten path is a company called Phantom Auto. Phantom Auto designs technology that will help human remote control autonomous vehicles in situations such as uh, road accidents, harsh uh, environmental situations, and uh, road constructions. AI is coming after your job. Automation is predicted to replace 6% of the jobs in the United States in the near future. It's not only blue-collar employee that should be worried, but also white-collar employees, highly educated, knowledge-based. A research conducted by the Oxford University suggests that accountants has 95% of losing their job to automation. And a research conducted by Deloitte suggests that 39% of all the jobs in the legal sector will be automated in the near future. One interesting company is called Sense Education. They are developing artificial intelligence software that can analyze free answer questions in the field of mathematics, science, engineering, and technology, and give personalized feedback. This is a trend everybody sitting in this room should be afraid of. Our fifth trend, tech trend for 2018 uh, is all about uh, 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 crypto coins and blockchain. Crypto coins had attracted a lot of attention both in financial markets and news headlines recently. Uh, however, all of them, all crypto coins, have a basic flaw. They can process very small number of transactions. Compared, for example, with thousands of transactions that can, that can be processed by credit card vendors. This, of course, limits significantly their capacity to become a day-to-day -day currency. Numerous uh, companies around the world, and at least one Israeli company, is developing, are developing technology to help correct this scale issue. Once they do, we may see the rise of a crypto dollar currency. Food engineering. 
The worldwide plant-based meat market cap is set to get, to get to $14 billion by 2022. However, it is expected to grow to a third of the entire meat industry by 2050. The indirect economic effect of the plant-based meat is that livestock occupies 45% of the global surface, estimated at $1.4 trillion. The environmental effect is that livestock and its byproducts are actually in charge of third, uh, third of the water footprint of the entire agriculture industry and around half of the worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. Companies such as Supermeat, an Israeli-based company, is developing, is growing meat within their laboratories. In the next year, years, we will be able to eat meat that was grown in the lab without the economic and environmental effect. Our seventh stack trend uh, for 2018 is uh, data privacy. Uh, it is uh, something that is occurring very uh, frequently in last years that governments are very heavily regulating data, uh, data privacy. We see, for example, in the European Union, new regulation that would fine 20 million euros of organizations that violate our privacy. And this is only one aspect of the need of organizations to better control and protect one of their most valuable uh, resources, their data. A very good example of a company operating in this field is D-Day Labs. D-Day Labs is a young Israeli startup that develops technology that will automatically search, classify, and manage the organizational data, and at the same time, provide compliance with data privacy regulation. Prescri your prescription drugs. Actually, the concept of, of personalized medicine is not new. We can trace it back to Hippocrates 460 BC. What is new? The technology that actually enables it. It has a very wide range, starting with gene sequencing, um, cloud computing, big data analytics, computational power. Unlike the conventional medicine, when it has one known structure and a predefined dose, Cannabis is a very interesting example. It's a natural flower, and it has a lot of different uh, active substances. An interesting company is called Quanabis. They're analyzing the cannabis, determining its uh, active substances, and purpose, uh, and propose, sorry, uh, precision medicine. Our ninth tech trend for 2018 is aging in place technology. It is estimated that more than 90% of older Americans would like to age in their homes. Uh, new home, smart home technologies are providing much that provides much better security and assistance are gaining sharp popularity. New types of sensors are being developed that will enable to monitor uh, the day-to-day -day activity of the elderly and um, detect any type of un abnormalities, such as falls, lower sleep quality, and change in the habits of the elderly. All that without giving up and compromising the right for the elderly to privacy. Offline commerce. So we all love to talk about the empty shopping mall epidemic. However, 90% of all shopping are still done offline. The fact that the online shopping is growing does not mean the doom of the brick and mortar stores. What is inevitable? Bringing the mobile and digital experience into the offline experience. Amazon is controlling this trend, bought Whole Food, um, opened Amazon Go, but we see amazing startups such as um, Top Automation, where you can go inside any store, just pick whatever you want, and go outside. No cashiers, no need to scan any QR codes. Other companies such as Satisfy means that you don't need employees. You have a digital agent within your store. Remember that we said that the humans will never be obsolete? Well, the hands-on experience would not be either. 
This was our last trend. All we have left to do is just wait for next year and see how close we got. Thank you very much, Stav, and thanks, everybody. And see you in the next Global Investor Summit includes 10 nonprofits helping to give back to society. The sharing economy is not only about creating monetary value, but human impact, and collaboration is at the center of this kind of global economy. Now, joining me at our OCTV studio are two very cool people representing organizations who are living collaboration here in Jerusalem. Ori Israeli from Motorola Solutions and Rajan Luthra from Reliance. So, Welcome. Thank you for being here with us. And I know that you're going to be um, soon in the hackathon, right, of the yep. Labs O2 innovation. You are supporting the, the Labs O2, the new incubator. So tell us, how did this unique uh, partnership happen? Well, it's an interesting story. I think, uh, you know, collaboration between an American company, an Indian company, and obviously uh, our crowd here in Jerusalem, uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, I guess you know we, we were looking to to partner with others uh, that were multinational in a local incubation and government supported uh, incubator and I think it was uh, actually very natural for us as Motorola Solutions to partner with you know unique and very good partners um, and when we were looking for such partners it came to mind that you know our crowd with their network and with their ability to bring in people and it's all about people eventually uh, and their I guess innovative model together with that it, it helped us a lot to to know that we would actually see really good companies in very early stage so uh, we reached out to our crowd and uh, we were already speaking with Reliance and it okay. made sense to put together this group Okay, and Rajan, Reliance is being um, India's largest private sector company and the first to feature in Fortune's Global 500 as a, one of the world's largest corporations. So why is Jerusalem so interesting for you? So thanks. I think uh, Israel innovation uh, is uh, something we all know about and I think uh, we as a company have been uh, at the forefront of driving innovation in India and uh, creating a lot of uh, uh, change in various businesses that we operate in India. Uh, we are uh, excited to be here in, in Israel as part of this incubator in uh, partnership with Motorola, our crowd and Yisum. But I think it's also the engagement with the, uh, the Israel Innovation Authority and the Office of the Chief Scientist. Uh, that to us uh, is uh, really a unique concept of driving innovation in a very structured manner. And we uh, believe uh, there is a huge potential in uh, the Israeli innovation being adapted for the Indian market. Uh, we at uh, Reliance and Geo have created the largest uh, 4G infrastructure uh, uh, in India, spending close to $31 billion over the last few years. And we believe a lot of uh, potential opportunity is there for Israeli uh, innovation and Israeli startups to address the Indian market and the large uh, population. So your, in, your interest is to bring uh, transfer technology to, to the Indian market? That, that, that's correct. 
And so Motorola solution creates innovative um, mission critical communication solutions, right? So um, what is the what is next for Labs02 in this in this area? Well, Labs02 is a, a really good platform uh, of uh, people who understand business, people who understand technology. Uh, we see them as a magnet to really early stage companies in the spaces that we're interested in, which is uh, you know mission critical public safety solutions. Uh, it's about uh, analytics, video analytics. Uh, we see this in you know smart city applications. Uh, and Labs02 is a very good incubator for these types of businesses that eventually we can see how they can come into our customers through us and help us with our innovation. You know, innovation is something you cannot do today on your own. You have to have Absolutely. partners. Absolutely. So you're partnering together, a U.S. company, an Indian company. Tell us how, let's, let's play a game about collaboration and the first thing that comes to mind. Let's see how you think about the same, the same words. So I'm going to give you one word and tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, so Rajan first and then Ori. Okay, so collaboration. Uh, Motorola. Potential. Technology. Innovation. That was my word too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So future. Cooperation. Artificial intelligence. Okay, so very cool to see um, three giants, our crowd, Motorola Solutions and um, Reliance from India. With such different backgrounds, moving forward, innovation forward to benefit several geographies. So now let's go to see some of the cool tech that we have enjoyed here and to see how machines are getting smarter. For a century, we have been living in an era of machines, but a new era is dawning. Smart machines. With record investments in artificial intelligence, VCs are pouring over $5 billion into AI startups. Now that AI is becoming mainstream, some futurists believe smart machines have the potential to reshape nearly every industry. From virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa to bionic limbs and smart cars, AI is already becoming integrated into our daily lives. Is the food on your plate a product of artificial intelligence? Smart machines are making strides in almost every field, literally. CropX has created the Internet of Soil, where AI meets cloud and DIY installation of smart sensors to optimize adaptive irrigation of any field. Activated simply by reading a QR code with a mobile phone, the data acquired by the sensor is sent to the cloud to be accessed from any mobile or fixed device. Their app provides actionable intelligence that tells a farmer when and how to irrigate. Smart machines are also creating a new future in the place where we want to spend the least time, the doctor's office. Sight has created OLO, the first complete blood count system for point of care. Hold of uh, blood diagnostic or complete blood count, there are many solutions out there, but none of the existing solutions really use machine vision or artificial intelligence. Uh, therefore, applying these uh, specific techniques allows us to come up with a completely unique solution that can provide high quality of results at relatively fast uh, delivery times so without all the hassle and the complexity that is currently involved in all the other solutions. So in the revolution of point of care, the idea is to provide the doctor with the maximal possible tools to allow him to start tailoring the right, uh, the right treatment and the right uh, medical approach on the spot without sending the patient elsewhere, aka an hospital or big uh, centralized lab, thus saving him time and provide a much higher quality of medical treatment. We can forget waiting for days to receive lab results. With Allo, doctors will have the answers they need within a single office visit. Artificial intelligence is even disrupting the ultimate fintech untouchable, the insurance business model and behavioral economics behind it. Imagine that you wanted to create a system that would get the worst out of people. What would you do? You would start by getting people to give you their money, and then you would promise to give them things back later when bad things happen to them, but when something bad happened, you would start fighting with them. Plus, you would show them that you don't trust them and you will have extra small print and you would say, we don't cover this and we don't cover this and we don't cover this terrible process. But sadly, this is where the insurance industry is at right now. The startup Lemonade is set to change that with the help of artificial intelligence. 
Lemonade is about no brokers, no killer prices, and an AI-crafted personalized policy. All this from the comfort of the user's smartphone, while giving back to causes that matter to the customer. And perhaps a first in the age-old industry of insurance, blown away customers are tweeting about it. Literally half the price, the place where I was getting jewelry insurance for, it's like a real amount of money in my life because of lemonade. And it was super easy. Five dollars a month, that's like a latte. If someone asked me like, what are my favorite apps, like I would put Lemonade up there with just like an amazing solution that saves me money and gives me peace of mind. So machine learning by insurance sexy, that's new. But what's not old, what's old news is self-driving cars. But has any car that you hopped into a concierge? Well, let's try Vocal Zoom's car. Come on. Hey, Zev, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Uh, we're very excited to try what uh, you have been developing, the software that you've been developing. Tell us, um, what is the main challenge of software voice recognition? So uh, the main challenge of voice recognition in cars, you mean, it's how do you deal with different noise environment? How do you cope with the fact that there is a lot of noise in the car? How do you manage to recognize the speaker? And how do you manage to understand what he's talking about? And how did you solve it? So basically what we have developed is an optical microphone that translates the vibration of the facial skin when you talk into voice. By that, we actually don't hear your voice, we see your voice and we actually agnostic to the noisier, noisier uh, surrounding. And he's going to recognize me? That's what we're going to try now? Oh yeah, we do. Definitely it will. Okay, yeah, let's try. Okay, let's go. Let's see if vocal zoom software recognition will recognize my melodious voice. Let's see. We need to enroll you into the system so the system will have a signature of your uh, optical voice. Once it will be done, you'll, be, uh, you'll have a profile in the system, and then the system will know that it's your talking or somebody who is trying to imitate you. Now, you will need to say five times a, sen a sentence, uh, and that will help the system to have signatures of yours inside the system. It is a heat engine that does not use a liquid or gas. It is immune to your noise completely, and it's very, more than that, it's immune to fraud because I can't record you and put it in front of the microphone. I actually have to have physically you because only your skin vibration generates that uh, voice signature. So I can't wait to get this feature in my car, and I bet you guys can too. This is the time of history of mankind where smart stop being an attribute of humans. It's also of machines now. And medicine is not an exception. So let's go see what's in the future of healthcare. Even in the age where humans live longer than any other time in history, our ability to understand and take control of our health is limited at best. Even in the most westernized countries, the spiral of costs and the burden of chronic diseases, combined with the labyrinth of healthcare services, is more complex than ever. Digital health offers hope, and it's already visible all around us. With the help of wearable technology and the use of data analysis, we can now interpret our body signals in a way that makes sense to us. Paying proactive attention to our personal health needs, doctors receive data at the right time, and what's more, in so many cases of digital health solutions, the most powerful medical device is one you already own, your smartphone. In 2016, there were over $8 billion in investments and $6.8 billion in exits in the digital health space. Leading analysts say this is just the start. With a keen eye on this new state of medical care, our crowd launched Cure, Israel's first digital health fund. Israel is one of the very few countries in the world that has a fully digitalized healthcare system which creates a great beta site that cures an ecosystem. We've collaborated with leading international strategic partners like Johns Hopkins from the States, Discovery, the international and innovative insurance company, Janssen, the pharmaceutical subsidiary of J&J and others. Together, we create an environment which we call the triple win. One of the companies in Pure's portfolio, TitoCare, is empowering patients by taking telemedicine to a new level. TitoCare's device allows you to perform medical examinations as if they were a face-to-face -face visit with a doctor and sends the information to the physician. 
so patients can get a quick diagnosis including temperature, heart rate, ears, throat and lungs from the comfort of home or anywhere. This technology also represents significant cost saving. In the U.S., a basic primary care visit costs around $170, three times the cost of telemedicine appointments. Another tech company revolutionizing healthcare is BrainQ Technologies, which is one of four artificial intelligence-based startups selected for Google's brand new Launchpad Studio. Motor disability following a neuro disorder is an imminent problem affecting hundreds of millions of people just stroke alone, one of our leading indications, affects 15 million people every year. Currently, there is no good solution out there. BrainQ's mission is uh, to help these people moving back their upper and lower limbs using advanced artificial intelligence tools in a non-invasive and user-friendly way. Digital health solutions are more necessary than ever as the global population ages. Healthcare demands accelerate and services lag behind. Through proactive and personalized medicine, these innovations are rapidly advancing one of the most critical aspects of our lives, our health. We are living in exciting times in history. The life expectancy is longest than ever, and technology is helping us in the way we stay healthy. Now the doctor's office will change. The future will look very different. Maybe we won't even have a doctor's office and we will have it from the comfort of our home. And we maybe even use artificial intelligence and games. And here we are with Dr. Son Preminger. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? So tell me how did you come up with the idea of using artificial intelligence to help uh, brain patients? Um, so I'm a neuroscientist uh, and uh, my father had an accident and suffered a brain injury when I was doing my PhD. And we went through a very long cognitive rehabilitation process with him. And through this process, I saw that after a very short time, very short period, uh, he and also other people are released home without any treatment at all. And this doesn't make any sense because I know from research that uh, the brain is plastic and you can keep working and working and improving for a much longer duration. So I thought there must be a way to continue that. And what did you do? Uh, so basically, uh, training the brain uh, is based on the concept of brain plasticity. Uh, when you activate the brain, the brain changes and adapts and learns new things. So we're basically here, uh, we're sort of uh, experience engineers. We design video games that they are realistic experiences that are uh, relatively similar to real life. They include real life motion and also dynamic, uh, you'll see in a second, dynamic uh, scenarios that are really like real life. So to rehabilitate, uh, we need to play like Patients in game, it's fun, but you really, what you do is practice your cognitive skills. So this is the side of the artificial intelligence and gamers, I think you're going to love it and I'm going to love it too. I love to play, so yalla, let's play. So the idea is in real time, we measure both your uh, motion uh, parameters and also your cognitive performance and we adapt everything to you personally. So what you will play now and someone else, which is with a brain injury is playing, will be very different because we always adapt it to uh, your specific needs. So the beauty of AI software is that can, you can update it, right? We do update it all the time. Any feedback we get from customers at home or clients that are institutions, we always update the software. So we want to give you, our audience, a great challenge. Do good. Share with us your favorite game. And we will be crowdsourcing the next Nintendo game. And you can, do, you can help brain-impaired patients to find their, their te therapy at home. So, yalla, go right there in the comments and Son will be receiving very good help for us. So it was great to be with you here. It was fun and the best is that you're helping a lot of people that are, that are improving their, their cognitive skills. Thank you so Thanks much. For coming. Thank you. companies in Labs02 Incubator is trying to do good to the next generation. I don't know about you, but I had a bit of a tough teenage life, and the word bullying didn't even, was, was, didn't even coined yet. 
But in the age of Snapchat and WhatsApp, bullying has moved from the playground to the internet. But tech is here now to help. Joining me at OCTV studio is Hanan Lipskin, CEO of Keepers. How are you? Hey, nice to meet you. It's an amazing event. We are so proud to be here as one of our proud companies. And it's really nice. Okay, so before we jump into the questions, let's play a little game. So I'll give you a word and you'll tell me the first that word that comes to mind, okay? okay. Ready? Social media. Facebook. Family. Fun. Technology. Amazing. Investment. Hub. Friends. Uh, my life. Artificial intelligence. Super tough. Okay, <laughs> so you use artificial intelligence to um, try to keep teenagers safe. So how did you come up with, with the idea of applying artificial intelligence into, into the cyberbullying area? One of the biggest challenges is to understand the content and the emotion out of text. For example, children use the phrase of something bad to emphasize something very big. It's solely for the bad world, but it's fucking amazing and it can be something else. So we need to understand the content of the world and this will enable us to ensure that the world is bad or good. So we use artificial intelligence to understand the content and emotion out of text. So explain to us first, what does the, what is your, your application do? What does Keeper do exactly? So Keeper is a platform which you install on a child device and we detect all of the incoming and outgoing text messages on all social media platforms including Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat and etc. So you're and like sort of a big brother of the social media? Exactly. Okay. And if we spot something problematic, we will alert it to the parent. If the conversation is okay, we will keep the child privacy. But if we will detect something which is pedophile or bulimia action or something that shouldn't be done, then we will report it to the parent. We also can track the child location and the battery usage and the Wi-Fi and the time usage of the child on the smartphone. And we create a safe environment for the child to know how to use the smartphone. And by that, we're enabling a parent to have a tool to protect the children. Okay, so on one hand, it's very exciting to be able to have a tool to help your child. But on the other hand, it's sort of, um, it's a little bit of invasive, right? It violates the privacy of the child. How do you manage that? How do you balance that to keep so the privacy? So we aim keep it to be my first phone application to children until the age of 13, because they haven't developed yet the understanding of how to behave in social media platforms. They don't know the meaning behind the words. They can be in social media and they don't understand the effect of their meanings. So this is what we're doing. Uh, we're aiming for this group of age. And once the parent tells the child, okay, you can have your full smartphone, but you will have to keep it inside of it because I need to make sure that what you're doing is not harming anyone else. So this is what we're aiming to do. Okay, so you're having also, the, you're being backed by IBM, if I understand correctly, by IBM Watson. Can you share with us a little bit about that partnership? Yes, we are back up with IBM Watson and also the Open Commission is backing us up and also Google and Facebook, they're also one of our partners. Uh, IBM Watson, we're using heavily their technology and they gave us a lot of funding and a lot of uh, in-kind services. So what we're doing is we're taking all of the information we can understand if it's good or bad. We can also understand about the city location. If in some area in the city, people are talking about cyberbullying or about racism, and then the educational system can better educate the children inside of this area because of the metadata that we are collecting. So this also helps to improve the education. It's also helped to improve the conversation between children. And the goal is to make something beautiful for this world. So it's very exciting what you're doing. We're very excited also to see what um, you're gonna you're gonna demo the the tech in the hackathon, right? Yes. Very very close by. And if you have in your country cyberbullying, which I'm sure there there is, and if it has become an issue for teenagers in your country, give a shout out about Keepers. Share this amazing life saving tech with the hashtag uh, hashtag OC Summit 18, and, and tag me Ale Barav, and let's see if we trend together on fighting cyberbullying. So let's go now to the main plenary room to hear an amazing story on how collaboration between startups and corporates is saving lives, literally. While capturing those images, you can see the drone on the left. This is an off-the-shelf drone flying autonomously. Nobody flies drones like that in construction. This is the digital replica which we created in 3D. What you see here is the design, and the next one will show the variation analysis that we can create that compares the design to the actual. The color coding represents the deviation 
so we can uh, detect the quality errors, but as well as monitor the progress of the site using these algorithms. We can also enable the user to detect quality errors at high altitudes, uh, in this case in the 50th floor, uh, or compare the plan to the design in 2D, which immediately highlights the problems of the construction that was performed. Uh, you can see more about us uh, at uh, boost number 43 in the Honda robotics area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ori. Next up is Jump. Jump is uh, the world's leading bike sharing platform. Uh, the current round is being led by Menlo Ventures, and I have the pleasure of welcoming Ryan Jepetsky, who's the CEO and the former head of New York City's bike sharing department. Ryan. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, Jump makes a shared electric bike uh, for short point-to-point -point trips in cities. We were actually the first company to create dockless bike share technology. Uh, we were incorporated in 2010 and brought it to market in 2012, many years before this trend emerged in China and around the world. Uh, we have actually deployed uh, 14,000 bikes across six countries, uh, 40 projects in 25 cities. We have more than half a million users and have logged more than 5 million trips. Uh, and we're really in a great position to execute as the landscape changes. So over the last uh, year and a half, bike share has been booming and growing, and cities have been moving away from uh, one-player monopoly contracts toward an open permitting competitive environment. And we're bringing to market at this time a product that is extremely competitive uh, and something that, it, that consumers are really just driving toward. Uh, so we have a shared electric bike that allows people to lock anywhere in a city, uh, we have charging infrastructure that goes with that to allow operations uh, to scale. Uh, and you know, we are live in San Francisco and in Washington, D.C., and the response has just been terrific. Um, finally, yesterday, we actually announced a partnership with Uber. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> so this is going to allow a seamless integration inside the Uber app, uh, a very, very fast uh, sign-up. Uh, inside the Uber app to begin accessing the bikes, and you'll actually be able to see uh, bikes alongside the cars and make the, the selection of a bike where those trips make sense. Um, and so that, that news went out yesterday and got picked up by all the tech media, and we had a, a really good day. So uh, uh, thank you. I've enjoyed my time here in Israel and hope to be back. Thank you, Ryan. So when you next take an Uber in New York, if your ride is less than two miles long, Uber is going to suggest you take a jump bike and get there faster and cheaper. Uh, next is uh, BioCatch. BioCatch is doing behavioral biometric authentication, which really means no more passwords. Devi the devices will recognize us and are actually recognizing us by how we interact with them, how we touch them, how we uh, use the mouse and the keyboard. Uh, the, uh, they're currently authenticating over four billion transactions a month. Their customers include Royal Bank of Scotland, Samsung, Experian, and uh, Nexus Lexus. Next up is Nexa 3D, and this is a company that is coming up on our site, is the fastest 3D professional grade printer available. Okay, it's 40 times faster than their competitor, twice more accurate, and five times cheaper to produce the parts. Their competitor, Carbon, just raised around at $1.7 billion valuation, and Nexo 3D is going up on our platform at 90 million pre. Invered, which also will be funding soon, it's an air purification technology company that is basically licensing patents from NASA and they have their own uh, patents as well. This is technology that has been used in, in space stations and submarines to purify air. It produce, now it's being used in real estate. Morgan Stanley, Apple, Ikea, Google are using their technology already. It basically gives twice uh, better air, twice as, uh, improves the, the, the quality of the airs uh, 2x and reduces the cost of energy by up to 40%. And 
And last, Zoomcar, which is a really interesting company doing with cars what, Air, what, Air, what Airbnb did with apartments, basically allowing you to rent your car when you don't need it hassle-free. And they've become the largest platform for car sharing, self-driving car sharing in India. Uh, we're co-investing in this deal with Sequoia Capital and Ford, and it's coming up on our platform very soon. Thank you. FDA clear device class 2 We make video surveillance searchable, quantifiable and actionable. Once I see a vehicle that's uh, of interest, then I can go back and see the original scene as it happened in in real life. We are a company um, working on a communication system for small satellites. What we're doing is a one gigabit per second antenna, and this is about 500 times more than any link from any nanosatellite exists today. This is the decade where new paradigms have emerged, not only about unexpected locations like Jerusalem, Pune, and Stockholm as entering the tech and VC scene, but women are securing their spots in the man's world of STEM and VC. Joining me at OCTV studio, two amazing women, Anu Vardwad, who just flew from a week in Davos in the women, uh, sharing six panels in the women blockchain, right? In the World Economic Forum in Davos. And, and Israeli Hedba Klein Handler, um, an icon of the startup world in Israel. So welcome uh, to the OCTV. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Um, so girls, we're going to start with a little game, association game. I'm going to give you uh, one word and then tell me the first word that comes to mind, OK? Venture capital. Fuel. Male dominated. Technology. Not enough women. Magnifier. Women. Uh, the next opportunity. Wealth. Access. Capital. Power. Opportunity. Not enough. Change the world. OK. That, that was very interesting. So I want us to tell you um, share with the crowd about your ventures. Hedba, you are running an all-women startup. How does that look like? Tell us about the startup and the women. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, uh, we started Emerge around a year and a half ago. Uh, the fact that we're all women is accidental, but it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and we come from very diverse backgrounds. So what we do is we actually democratize mentoring in the workplace, and that came for each of us, three co-founders, out of our own experiences in the workplace and with mentoring, which has been very meaningful to us. And what we discovered is that not only is it a huge need for people in the workplace, for employees, but it's also a huge need for organizations dealing with the future of work, uh, that it's changing so much because of generational needs, like millennials coming into work, because of technology needs, because location is not uh, no longer such a factor, and because it's shifting uh, the way that organizations need to grow, and even huge organizations like Fortune 500 companies need to operate like high-growth startups. 
So we help them help their people grow and learn on the go from other people around them. Our technology helps scale that because we actually tap into the untapped knowledge and experience that already uh, exists in the, inside the organization and then they can make smarter data driven decisions. So technology and mentoring together it's like moving forward the corporate. Yeah and right? what we feel you know we get asked a lot about being an all women team. We're actually three women co-founders, two women employees and uh, two of our amazing investors are also women. We're looking to diversify actually, but uh, one of the things that we think that does make a difference is just that we bring some unique empathy into the world of technology and organizations. And now that you're saying empathy, um, and why invest in women? You invest in women, right? It tells about that, your venture. Absolutely, so Women Investing in Women Digital is a media company. We've been around for about three years. Um, we launched the State of Women Radio and TV Network last year at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Um, our hosts are 16 to 23 year old girls. Um, they're students now at Harvard, Stanford, Wharton. Um, and I've been grooming them, some of them as early as 16 years old. And my youngest host is now a third year at the Wharton School of Business, um, okay. who started with me. And she's majoring in impact investing in finance. And we've done 100 shows on iTunes all related to um, women leading crowdfunding, angel investing, private equity. We've held private equity roundtables around the world where we educate women about investing into angel deals, crowdfunding networks, platforms, as well as private equity funds. So this is very exciting, like bringing the new generation into the world of very early, right? Very early, but also we have, we have um, special specialized events for women of wealth who want to go into um, various investment opportunities, like our crowd, for instance. Um, we are now talking with uh, your team, our crowd, about launching a women's initiative. I think that's fairly exciting. Let's see where that goes. But um, it's at the heart of everything that we do. We have an audience, a media company. We've got a global audience of viewers and listeners. But the next phase is how do you onboard them and make them investors? So um, what do you see in the future of women in VC and startups locally and globally, Hedva. Oh wow, uh, so first of all, like my dream is that, you know, it wouldn't be women in VC, women in tech necessarily. You know, I think all of our dreams is that we just, as usual, you know, we're more than 50% of the society, it just should be part of the industry. Uh, but I would like to see as, as a startup entrepreneur, we meet with mostly men VCs and it would be really, really refreshing to see more women in VC and we've seen that working with women uh, investors has made a huge difference for us. And for women entrepreneurs, I would like to see more things that help them, uh, first of all, get a be better network for getting clients, for getting investors, but even more than that, uh, the network part of seeing, you know, you can't be what you can't see. So seeing other women in their network who have built incredible startups, who have invested in startups, and feeling that they can uh, also follow and lead. And, and what do you see in the future of uh, women in investment? So I'm actually um, working on different investment vehicles right now. One of the things that I'm, I'm creating is digital wallets and wearables for women to invest into cryptocurrency, blockchain initiatives. Um, how do we onboard these women? Because currently right now, only 1.75% of women in the world are invested into the blockchain. And this is going to be the future, just like the internet was in yeah. 2000. Blockchain's where we're headed, and how do we onboard women into this platform? I also want to see women less risk averse and more confident about investing into angel deals or growth, start, growth uh, ventures that are led by women. There's just not enough. I think. Currently, it's like under 20%. That number could be much higher to get more women onboarded. So really just making it simplified for them because right now it's like too complex. And I think our Crowd 50 is like a great example of a vehicle where I could put my money in and it's already diligenced and, and there's a way for them to feel comfortable about their co-investors and the pipeline and the diligence. So really just, um, getting more women to take take initiative. It's very exciting to see you from both sides of the coin, right? From the startup side and from the VC side. Thank you for joining us today in the Our Crowd TV coverage of the Global Thank Investor you. Summit. And we hope to see more of Emerge and more of uh, the state of women and women investing in women. Awesome. And one of the things I love about the summit is the spirit of collaboration. And we see in, in women's um, ventures, 
all, this spirit of collaboration. Thank you for joining us. This was our midday um, coverage. If you liked it, if you want to share with your friends, go ahead to the um, hashtag OC Summit 18 and tag me Ada Barav, and we, you will see much more of tech and investments in our next episode. And for now, is all. Thank you, girls, for being Thank for joining you. us. You for and shalom, us. shalom from Jerusalem. Shalom.